We are the public stewards of over 2,900 hectares of natural space, which includes 62 conservation areas. The parks team takes a lot of pride in the fact that we are thoughtful and principled stewards of CDC's publicly held land and water, and we are deeply dedicated to providing our visitors with unique experiences that connect them to our mission. The importance of green spaces and trails is well documented and plays a major role in our physical and mental well-being. At CVC, our parks provide equitable access and opportunities for recreation to watershed residents and visitors year-round. In 2020, the world was changed forever by the COVID-19 pandemic. While we shut the gates for a few short months, this only solidified the importance that green spaces play in our lives. As we reopened, it was evident that our parks provided a sense of safety and solace for individuals and families and kept us motivated and recharged through some of the most challenging times in our lives. But COVID-19 is only one aspect in our visitation story. Visitation to our parks has been on the rise for years. Demands on our properties, trails, facilities, and park operations have been increasing, and we've been adapting and mitigating these challenges collectively to manage visitor expectation and experiences. While fluctuations have existed year to year, since 2010, we have experienced a 225% increase in visits. In 2020, CBC Parks hit the first 1 million visitor milestone, even with months of parks closures. In 2021, we've already exceeded that milestone, and the year isn't over yet. Given this data, it came down to the dedicated staff who managed the influx of visitation. One of our team's defining aspects is a dedication to customer service and a client-centric approach to everything we do. Be it one person or tens of thousands, we want the park's experience to be impactful. Though the pandemic challenged our ability to hire seasonal staff and schedules and training changed as often as the provincial regs did, we managed to accommodate our customers responsibly with a big smile on our faces. We're transforming how visitors experience our parks to create a memorable experience for all. From the moment they arrive and enter the park with greetings from our customer service representatives to the use of our facilities and services, we will wow them to the point CBC will be the talk of the town. In addition to frontline workers in the parks, the Conservation Areas Interpreters Program has also played a key role in providing that first point of contact to assist in creating that positive experience, especially during the pandemic. This program is only one example that showcases the results of collaboration within CBC. In June of 2021, the Cheltenham Badlands reopened to the public with a newly constructed park store that included a staff room and outdoor storage compound. This was a great improvement to the mobile staff trailer that had been previously in place for the past two operating seasons. The park store has enhanced the visitor experience by allowing park users to check in quickly at the accessible service window or take a walk through the building to purchase merchandise and concession items and connect with staff to ask questions about the unique features of the property. At Rattray Marsh, we're rebuilding three boardwalks to provide safer and more accessible trails to our visitors. The first of these boardwalk projects is the Knoll Trail, which had reached the end of its usable life. The boardwalk is being replaced using a helical pile system to minimize disturbance to the earth. Here, CBC staff are using a special attachment to our newly purchased mini excavator to install the pile foundations. We're also removing over 100 steps to make the trail more accessible. We plan to use this technology on many more trails in the future. Island Lake provides visitors with ample space for group picnicking. And with only one aging pavilion, we needed additional sheltered picnic spaces. Their conceptual designs, made in-house by talented CBC staff, will set the new standards for CA pavilions. Beautiful natural-looking features such as cedar shake profile steel roofs, cedar cladding inside, and large timber beams on sandstone veneered footings capture the CA aesthetic to a T. This was also the first capital project completed during the pandemic. Hi, I'd like to talk to you about the Island Lake Covered Bridge. As you can see, the bridge needed to be repaired, so we wanted something a little bit more spectacular. So Bob Shirley and Bill Lidster came up with the design of a covered bridge. Dave Brown and myself, Sam Ferguson, were able to make their vision come to life with something that was a piece of artwork, and we can give ourselves a big pat on our backs because it's something we're quite proud of. Over the last few years, we've been developing standards, updating our kiosks, and implementing wayfinding at CVC Parks. Visitors are now welcome to a professional and inviting staging area with consistent and cohesive messaging, updated news, and park information. Our new kiosk maps provide information that allows visitors to make informed decisions about their visit and intended experience. 
Wayfinding elements have also been implemented throughout the trails, including trailhead posts, point of interest signs, and trail junction maps. These elements guide visitors safely through CBC parks and supports park operations, customer service, overall visitor experience, and efficient emergency response if needed. Over the year, working with our Indigenous partners and Indigenous community members, CBC made some incredible progress, cultivating meaningful relationships to work towards mutually transformative goals for our parks and for our organization. Through collaborative efforts with the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, we developed the Indigenous Engagement Guidelines, establishing a framework for best practice related to Indigenous engagement at CBC. Work this year that's connected to the Conservation Area's Master Strategy saw the inclusion of an Indigenous Engagement Partnership Plan, a plan that focuses on nurturing existing relationships and building meaningful partnerships through engagement. And adhering to best practice, we initiated an opportunity to co-author sections of CVC's Watershed Plan, amplifying Indigenous voices in our work. We've also made some significant progress collaborating with the Credit Valley Trail Indigenous Roundtable to develop placemaking and interpretive features along the route that will serve to illuminate Indigenous heritage as well as the enduring presence of Indigenous peoples in the area. One of the most exciting and truly transformational projects has been the construction of what is known as Phase 1 of the Bell Fountain Conservation Area Management Plan. The results of nearly seven years of thoughtful planning, consultation, design, and permitting involving many internal staff, stakeholders, and community members, this complex project involves the restoration of 180 meters of the West Credit River by entirely removing the sedimented head pond and letting the water flow again through a new naturalized channel. It involves the one meter lowering and bedrock anchoring of the historic Bell Fountain Dam and the creation of a bold, interesting, and flood resilient public realm that pays tribute to the cultural legacy of the park. This includes 250 meters of an all new elevated boardwalk system, a new 22 meter span pedestrian bridge, an artisan created stone masonry features such as the meandering dry stone wall made of local Credit Valley sandstone, and a new spring-fed lily pond, which pays homage to the former swimming pool. We are restoring the iconic bell fountain to its former glory, and a special touch is the all-new modern folly featuring our instantly lovable fox, Lucky. This once-in-a-hundred-year investment will ensure the long-term safety of the dam, now a weir, a return to the health and vitality of the West Credit, and the proper preservation of the Mac Park cultural heritage features, and of course, a vastly improved park experience for visitors. Construction began in June of this year, and we are on track for a May 2022 reopening to the public. This momentum has us excited to get moving on phase two of the plan, which includes a brand new visitor center, gatehouse, parking facility, and a new automated entry system. Through this work, CBC is demonstrating its commitments to the lands and its care, and providing leadership in park design and management. And Bell Fountain is once again set to become an iconic destination for generations to come. The restoration feasibility study and management plans for Pinch and Pit and Troll Soil Conservation Area is a really cool project. It's a partnership between CVC's parks and restoration management staff, as well as the region of Peel. In a nutshell, we are undertaking a feasibility study to look at the beneficial reuse of excess soil at Pinch and Pit, as well as the Flaherty Parcel at Charles Soil, both of which are retired aggregate sites. This will permit enhanced restoration. Both areas are also Credit Valley Parks and will eventually provide public access, passive and active recreation activities. For Charles Soriel, this will include a stretch of the Credit Valley Trail, as well as Fish Site, an Indigenous gathering space. From Pinch and Pit, well, there are many directions we could take. This project involves a lot of technical studies, engagement, public outreach, and planning considerations to navigate. We truly have the opportunity to do something really awesome here. Island Lake Conservation Area is one of our most beloved and highly visited parks. We've developed a new management plan for Island Lake that looks towards the future and whose success will be measured in part by how well it protects key values and responds to key pressures. We remain deeply committed to environmental protection and to providing an exceptional visitor experience. Island Lake has been reimagined and will be reinvented through a new entrance, new gatehouse, an Indigenous gathering site, a new park store and rental centre, a revitalized waterfront, a new education and events centre, a new operations centre, and a series of new visitor amenities such as new picnic areas and semi-private day camping sites. 
Island Lake is set to become the shining jewel that we've always known it to be. I can't wait for us to get started. The Jim Tovey Lakeview Conservation Area is set to transform the Lake Ontario shoreline and introduce people and wildlife back to the water's edge in Mississauga. This absolutely massive Lakeville project will create 26 hectares of new land for habitat restoration and public use. A partnership between Region Appeal, TRCA and CBC, this project is designed to make better local use of excess fill to restore one of the most ecologically impacted reaches of our shoreline. The new conservation area is named in honour of the driving force behind this bold idea, the Lake Councillor Jim Tovey. Project partners are well underway in completing the landform, and CBC's Restoration Management Group has been working diligently since 2017 in creating and restoring the site's aquatic and terrestrial habitats. In anticipation of providing a fitting experience for visitors, we have been working on a new public realm design, which will include 1.5 kilometers of new waterfront trail with special gateway features, a promontory outlook, and safe seasonal access to the barge pier. Most importantly, we are working closely with the Mississaugas of the Credit on an Indigenous teaching amphitheatre at the heart of the site, ensuring that the soul of the project is forever linked with our actions towards reconciliation with Indigenous peoples and with nature. We're looking forward to a 2025 completion and to bringing this land into operation as one of CVC's most popular destinations within our system of parks. While we are busy at work transforming parks like Bell Fountain, Jim Toby Lake View, and Island Lake, in creating the 100-kilometer Credit Valley Trail, we are also busy identifying land acquisition opportunities that will provide new green space for recreation, tourism, and environmental restoration. Ultimately, we aspire to create a holistic green space system that connects our conservation areas to each other and that connects our conservation areas to national, provincial, and municipal park systems within and beyond our watershed, a connected system that is the heartbeat of healthy, resilient communities. Our recent work in parks has laid a solid foundation for the future of our conservation areas. The timing has never been better to acquire more land, build more trails and green infrastructure, connect green spaces, and foster a healthy environment. We have never been more certain that our work is vitally important to the health and well-being of communities in the Credit River watershed.